on my lap. Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we are doing our nature uh, fun patch. Um, we just, it's still 632, so we'll give it another couple seconds here. I want to make sure I'm popping up on your screen. Hi Lola. Hi Anna and Addie. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, so as always, during our patch programs, uh, we are going to discover, connect, and take action to earn this patch. Um, and again, we're doing the Nature Fun Patch. Um, so to, to discover, um, we'll discover how natural it is to have fun in nature, and we're going to be making a nature exploration kit um, that'll help us to discover even more. Uh, plus, we're gonna be learning a little bit about leaf identification. Um, and then we'll connect with nature by making a simple bird feeder um, that will help us to observe our bird friends right here in our backyards. Um, and then we'll take action by sharing what we've learned, all these new nature fun facts and activities with uh, a friend or family member. So um, just a heads up, I think we just came out with our um, outdoor challenge uh, for this season, for the summer. Um, and on that challenge, some of the things that are on the challenge are making a bird feeder and feeding the birds, which we'll be doing today, so you can check that one off. Uh, we'll be learning how to identify a tree by its leaves, so we'll be doing a little bit of leaf identification, so that's another one you can check off right away. Um, and then we also have go bird watching. So you'll be making a um, bird feeder, and you can watch birds as they come and uh, look at your bird feeder, so you can check that one off too. Okay, so the first thing um, that we're gonna cover is making a nature exploration kit. So, I have just an old shoebox. Um, I haven't decorated it, we won't decorate it today, but um, if you have a, a sh an old box or bag, um, feel free, free to decorate it with nature stickers, color on it, write your name on it. Um, just about this big will be funny. So that will be mine, I'm gonna put this off to the side. Um, and then I definitely want to have a pen or pencil in my kit, um, and I want to have a notebook um, for taking notes. Um, so I have this one with kitties on it, um, but any notebook, um, as long as it fits into your nature kit and size will do well, because um, you'll be taking notes on leaves and birds and all kinds of things in nature. Um, so I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to put this off to the side, um, but we're going to make a couple charts in our notebooks um, that will help us take notes about birds and leaves. Um, so the next thing I want to do, um, I know I didn't have you guys bring this, um, is a set of binoculars. Because um, I know not everyone has binoculars, um, but I wanted to go over a little bit of how you can use binoculars if you do have them or if you're interested in getting them. Um, so these are going to take off uh, the lens caps on either side. And then I have on the back as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the distance um, between the two focal points. So you can see I can bend it inward and have them close together or bend them outward and have them farther, farther apart. And that's so that they can fit um, in the space between my eyes. Um, so I want to look through them and adjust that um, until I don't see anything dark in my vision. Um, if I'm seeing like a black line in my vision, that means part of the um, view here is in the way, is in the middle of my eye. I'm gonna make sure I don't see any black. Focus on a point outside. Okay, that looks good to me. So the next thing I'm gonna do, this part in the middle here, um, I can twist it back and forth. And I'm going to use that to focus my vision. So I'm going to focus on a point in the distance and I'm going to move this until it comes into focus. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then um, I have to do fine focusing. So for fine fo focusing, I'm going to close my right eye um, and using just my left eye, it's probably opposite for you guys. Using just my left eye, I'm gonna adjust that focus wheel again. I'm gonna close my right eye. 
and adjust that focus wheel just slightly. And that looks good to me. So then another part on the binoculars on this right eye is another focus point. Let me see what it's called. Okay, now I'm gonna close my left eye, and this is called the diopter adjustment. Um, so I'm gonna close my left eye, and only looking through my right eye, I'm gonna adjust this part until everything comes into clear focus. Okay, that looks good to me. And I'm gonna open both my eyes, look through, and make sure everything's in focus, and if it is, then I've done it right. And that's how I use my binoculars. Pretty simple. So I'm gonna put my lens caps back on. So if you do have binoculars, um, feel free to put those in your nature kit. Um, and you can look at birds close up that are in the trees, anything like that. So then I'm gonna make sure to put everything back on, and I'll put them back in their case. and we'll put those off to the side. So just a little beginner on binoculars in case you ever decide to use them. Okay, so the next thing we are going to make is a specimen jar. So I've asked you to bring a water bottle. Just a plain water bottle will do fine. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and peel off the label. Hopefully yours comes off a little better than mine is. Um, and I always find it's helpful if you run it under some water, some warm water, that'll help get the label off too. Okay. I think that's about the best I'm going to get right now. Um, so once you have a, most of your label off, it doesn't all have to be off, you just want to be able to see into it as best you can. Um, I want to poke some holes um, so that my specimens that I'll be putting inside the jar will be able to breathe. Um, so I have this um, sharp kitchen utensil. Um, have your parents, if you have a parent with you, make sure you have a parent do this. Don't do this on your own, um, especially if it's a sharp object. Um, and I'm just going to poke some holes in my bottle um, so that those specimens in there are able to breathe. I'm going to take the cap off. That'll make it easier. Again, make sure you have a parent help you with this. If your mom or dad has um, a drill, um, that will work too. You gently poke some holes through. Um, and then I have just enough holes in there so that um, any bugs or anything I put in there will be able to breathe. Um, and then I've also put in a little bit of grass, a leaf, um, so that they have something to sit on while they're in there. Um, and then I can just put them in through here, screw on the lid, and I can observe them through here. Um, but I only want to leave them in for a little bit. I don't want to leave them in too long. Um, just enough so that I can observe them for a couple minutes. And then we're going to go ahead and unscrew it and then let them back out. So that is our specimen jar. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my shoebox or my nature kit. And I'll be able to take that with me outside. Okay, the next thing we're going to make is a magnifying container. Oh, I did want to mention, um, a water bottle works great for a specimen jar. Um, but I think the peanut butter containers, they have a little bit of a larger opening um, to get your specimens in there, your bugs and critters. Um, I like to use these. Um, it's just a little harder to get um, the holes through the cap, so you'll need probably a drill. Um, and you'll need a parent's help um, to get holes in there for them to breathe. Um, but this is something if you have peanut butter, which a lot of people do, um, or sun butter or anything like that. Um, once it's empty, wash it out real good. Uh, put some holes through the cap, and that works as well. I'll put that in here as well, but I'm going to need my dad to help me drill some holes through that cap. Okay, 
So the next thing we're going to make, um, this uh, nature kit calls for a magnifying glass, but I don't have one. Um, so I'm going to use some common household objects to make a magnifying glass. Um, so I'm going to need a plastic cup, just like this will work fine. I'm going to need some plastic wrap. I'm going to need a rubber band. I have two different sizes just to see what works best. And I will need a little bit of water. So I have like a little container of water. And scissors. Okay, so I'm going to take my cup. And I'm going to cut a little square um, in the bottom of it. So maybe just about this big um, so that I can fit things inside. Um, again, you're going to need a parent's help for this to cut this out. That big works pretty good. I'm going to make a hole just like that. And then if you have duct tape or something, you might want to tape um, the edges here um, so that they're not so pinchy and pointy. Um, so it's just about that big works so that you can fit um, whatever you're magnifying inside. And I'm going to take my plastic wrap. And I'm going to tear enough off just so that it can fit over uh, the glass. Looks like people are asking us to slow down a little bit. So. I'm going to slow down while you get that cut out. Let's see if we have any other comments. Yes, we will be doing some bird feeders in a minute, I promise. I don't think we're having any questions so far. Okay. So then I'm going to take my plastic wrap once I have my hole cut out. I'm going to put that over top of my cup. Um, it doesn't have to be super, super tight over top because we're going to put a rubber band to secure the sides. So just like this. All over the top. Um, if you want, you can cut off some of this excess. Go ahead and do that. How do you cut the cup so easily? Um, it's the hardest part is getting that first cut in, um, but once you do that, it was pretty easy to cut it around. Uh, make sure your you have a nice sharp pair of scissors and a parent's help. So now I'm going to take, I think I'm going to try my smaller rubber band first. I'm going to just put that over the cup to secure the plastic wrap in place. You can see my rubber band all the way around the top. I have a nice tight top. a little bit more off so it's not in the way. Looks just like this. Oh, someone says they have a magnifying glass. I wish I had one, um, but this works in a pinch if you don't have one. Okay, and it's also just fun. <laughs> so now we're going to take a little bit of water um, and then I put it in a container so I could put it in my nature kit and take it with me um, so I can make this on the go. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of water right on top here. And I need it to be a little looser so that the water doesn't run all off. Again, don't make that too, too tight on the top. Um, you want like a little divot for your water to sit in. So I always do that just a little bit. 
little bit. Let's see if it doesn't spill over. You guys can see that. And then if I look through, you'll notice that it's more magnified what's underneath the water. So I'm going to take, I'm going to test it out. I'm going to take this leaf that I got um, right from my own house plant. I'm going to stick that in the opening. I'm going to look through. And it's a little bit larger so I can see it better. So that is your magnifying glass in a pinch. Um, and then if I was outside, I could just toss this water and put it back in my container. Oh, I need a towel. Of course, I spilled water. And that is our magnifying glass in a pinch. Okay, and then I'm going to take my water. I'm going to take my magnifying glass. And I'm going to go ahead and put those in my nature kit. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how that works. So by using the plastic wrap in water, um, you're creating what's called a convex lens. Um, a magnifying glass is a convex lens that is used to produce a magnified image of an object. It magnifies because the lens curves outward and forms a dome. The parallel rays of light entering it on one side will converge or meet at a particular spot on the other side of the lens and create a larger Im image. Magnifying glasses and microscopes use convex lenses. So we created a convex lens with our plastic wrap and our water. Pretty cool. Uh, so now that we have most of our nature kit together, um, we have our magnifying glass, I have my binoculars, we have a critter kit, um, our notebook and our pen. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, leaf identification. Let me bring that up. Okay, so you should see on the screen now um, a couple charts about leaf identification. Um, and feel free to ask questions as we go. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my cat crying. <laughs> so there's a couple different types of leaf identification. Actually, um, before I do that, I'm going to make a chart in my notebook. Um, so that I can use to identify leaves. Um, so there's a couple different ways to identify leaves. Um, we're going to do it by their type. So I'm going to put, I'm going to make my notebook sideways. I'm going to put type. Just like this. And then a little bit farther over, I'm going to put arrangement. And then I'm going to put structure. And then I'm going to put margin. I'm going to put lines in between all of those. And I'll show you. I have type, arrangement, structure, and margin. And those are all the different um, things that we're going to talk about today to identify a leaf. 
Um, you might want to leave a little space. I didn't leave a space to write the leaf or put the leaf, um, but you can leave space here to do that. There's someone saying, what if we don't have all the stuff? No worries. Um, work with what you have. Um, that's what I'm doing. Some of the stuff I, um, I just had to find what I had around the house. Um, so if you don't have everything, no worries. Do what you can. Okay. So we're going to start off with type. Um, and I'm going to bring back up my leaf identification chart. Okay. So the different types of leaves um, are scale-like, broad and flat, and needles. Um, so let's start with broad and flat, because that's probably the easiest one to identify. Um, so if you see on the second chart, um, the big orange leaf in the middle, um, it says maple leaf underneath. Um, that is a broad and flat leaf. Um, most of the leaves on the chart are actually broad and flat. Um, pretty much speaks for, for itself. Any leaf that is flat um, and large um, would be a broad and flat leaf. That would be the type that it is. Um, so a lot of these are those. Um, the other two types um, are needles, um, which you might have on your Christmas tree, um, and scale-like. So needles, um, you can see on the second chart over on the very bottom, um, the two in the middle um, are needles. Um, they're like long and pointy. Um, and the difference between that and the last one, scale-like, um, scale-like is the one, the second chart over, um, all the way on the bottom, um, all the way on the bottom right, <clears throat> that is scale-like. Um, so not quite needles, but definitely not a broad and flat leaf. Um, I can see how needles and scales are a little bit confusing, um, but the scales, they're not quite as pointy. Um, they don't come to a point at the end. Um, so if you look at them next to each other, um, the two very bottom on the right, um, the Second one over are the needles, and then the last one over um, are the scale-like. And I have some examples to show you, too, um, that I actually got from my backyard, so we, you'll be able to see them um, a little more up close. Um, our second way um, to identify leaves is by their arrangement. Um, so the three different types of arrangements are alternate-leaved, opposite-leaved, and whorled-leaved. So the first is alternate-leaved. Um, you'll see that on the first chart, um, the third column over, I think you can see alternate underneath. Um, that means you have a leaf on the right of the branch, then a leaf on the left, then a leaf on the right, then a leaf on the left, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's that top one, that chart on the left, um, the third column over the very top one, uh, where it goes back and forth from right to left, that's called alternate. Um, the second one is called opposite leaved. Um, so you'll see that right underneath the alternate leaved one. Um, that's when there's two leaves, um, one on the right and one on the left, right next to each other. Um, and then that pattern keeps going down the branch. Um, so that's opposite. So you have two, a space, and then two more, and then a space, and then two more. Um, and then the final type is world. Um, so that's the third one down uh, in that same column underneath opposite. Um, that's when the leaves, leaves go around the branch all in the same place. So they kind of circle around um, the branch. So you have um, three or more leaves coming off the branch in the same place. Um, so those are the three types, uh, alternate, opposite, and world. Um, and if you want to write those down um, in your notebook too, um, so you know um, the different uh, ways that you can um, identify the leaves. So next to type, I'm going to put the three different ones, the scale-like, broad and flat, and needles. Um, just as a note to myself, um, so I remember um, how I can identify them. Um, in the same next to arrangement, um, or right underneath, um, I'll put alternate leaved, or just alternate, opposite, and world. Um, and hopefully you can see them um, on the chart. Somebody in the comments could let me know if they can see it okay. I think you can. It's a little small. Okay, so the next way is structure. 
is how you can identify leaves. Um, so the structure, there's only two different types. They're simple and compound. Um, so you'll see that um, in that very first chart all the way on the left. Um, you'll see there's one simple and two compound. So the simple is just the one leaf, um, and the compound are several leaves that make up a pattern. So that one's pretty simple. Um, you either have simple or compound. And then the last is margins, um, also known as their edge. So you can see that in the, the chart, the first chart um, in the middle column, there's three types, um, smooth, toothed, and lobed. So the smooth has smooth edges all the way around. The tooth looks like it has little tooths all the way around. Um, if you look on the second chart, um, that very first column on the top, there's that orange leaf, that one's toothed. Um, so you can see it has little points sticking out on the sides and the one next to it is lobed. Um, and then lobed, lobed was the last one that we had to go over. So lobed, um, you can see that last leaf on the bottom um, on that first chart in the center. Um, it looks like it has lobes all the way around, um, sort of goes in and out. Um, so those are the three different types, smooth, toothed, and lobed. Okay, if you want to see my notebook so you can see what it looks like. Hold on one second. Let me bring me back up. Hello. So you can see just right underneath type. I did write it up here at first, but that didn't that didn't sit well with me. So I put it right underneath, um, and then I can draw a line. And then we'll have this posted after. So if you need to come back to this chart and look at all the different ones. So type are scales, broad and flat, and needles. Some questions coming in. Ask me if I could show my notebook. Yes. So let me let me write them all down. And then I'll hold them up on the screen. And then you can pause it and copy them down into your own notebook. Hopefully my writing isn't too sloppy. my leaf identification chart up again. Okay. So here's my chart. I have my type, scales, broad and flat, and needles, my arrangement, alternate, opposite, and whorled. Structure is either simple or compound, and margins are smooth, toothed, or lobed. Um, so that's just a note to myself, so when I'm looking at leaves, I can remember um, the different types. Um, so if, let's actually take a look at some examples. And again, if you need um, some time to copy that down, feel free to pause. Hopefully you can read my writing. And we can post uh, the different types. I'll have actually um, in the comments, um, I have some friends in the comments. If you could t put the different types in, um, in the comments, um, so if people <laughs> can't read my writing, um, they can find those in the comments and copy them down. Okay, so I actually have some leaves I took right from my backyard. You can do the same thing um, that I, I got off um, some trees that I have, one in my backyard, one in my front yard. Um, so this is the first one, looks like this, and I want to see first what type, <coughs> excuse me, what type of needles 
things are. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> I gave away the answer already. What is the leaf type? Some people are asking to keep the notebook up longer. Um, somebody in the comments is going to put in um, the different types. Um, or I will at the end. So what do we have here? What type of leaf? Either scales, broad and flat, or needles. I have someone saying it's compound. Yep. This is a compound leaf. Needles, needles, yay! Yes, these are needles. Um, and then can we tell what the arrangement is? Are they alternate, opposite, or whorled? Might be a little bit hard to tell. A lot of needles coming in. Yes, needles. That is correct. A Christmas tree. Yeah, it is. It is pretty similar to a Christmas tree. Alternate. Yes, I see alternate coming in. Yep. So you can see if you look close. I have one on this side, and then I have one on this side, and one on this side, and one on this side, and it keeps going all the way down. So this one is alternate. Okay, and next I have, this is, one's probably gonna be pretty hard to see what the arrangement is, um, but what type of leaves are these? It's a different tree. Scales, yep, these are scales. Um, so they do look pretty similar to the needles, um, but these aren't pointy at the end. These ones are scales. Um, and then I think it's kind of hard to see, so I'll just tell you on this one. Um, these are opposite. Um, so you can see right next to each other, especially this one. Um, the leaves are coming out right next to each other, so that would be opposite. Um, so I'd write those down in my notebook, um, and that could help me identify them. Um, so you can get them right in your backyard. And then I have this one that I was looking at um, before um, under my microscope. Um, let's see what kind of margins you think this one has. Smooth, toothed, or lobed? Some people saying it's a simple leaf, yep. Smooth, toothed, or lobed. Smooth, yes. Awesome, yep. You can see on the sides, they're smooth. Um, there's no tooths, there's no lobes. Nice, smooth leaf. Awesome job, guys. I mean, if you got them wrong, that's okay. Um, it took me some time to figure this out, and this is um, just a couple different ones. Um, so it takes some practice. Go out and try to identify some leaves. Um, and there's also lots of websites that can help you identify uh, leaves and trees too. Um, so we'll link those in the comments as well. I think we already, uh, we might have already linked a couple. So look in there um, for more resources on identifying leaves and trees. But let's move on to what we've been waiting for, which is making bird feeders, um, which is my most, the part I'm most excited about. Um, so the first one, the first bird feeder I'm going to make, I'm going to have uh, my pine cone. Uh, I'm going to need a fat, so I have, 
shortening, like Crisco shortening. Um, so any sort of fat will work. Um, you can use peanut butter, um, but it should be unsalted because salt isn't good for birds. Um, so if you had, have unsalted peanut butter or Crisco, um, you can use that. And then if you have bird seed, you can use bird seed. Um, I'm using just plain Quaker oats. They don't have any salt or anything or any uh, flavoring in them. Um, but there's all different kinds of uh, things like kitchen things that you can feed birds. Um, so we'll link those in the comments as well. Um, you can look through and see if you have any of those things in your cabinet. Um, so I'm going to need my pine cone, my Crisco, my Quaker oats, um, and then I'm going to need some string um, so I can tie my pine cone up um, and then scissors to cut the string. So I'm just going to take my pine cone, I'm going to take some Crisco, I'm just going to put that on my pine cone, not too, too much, um, just enough so that the oats can stick. Um, and I just found this pine cone outside on the ground. I didn't pick it off the tree or anything. I'm just using my fingers because it's the easiest way to get those in there. Just kind of splattering it on. And let me put, while I'm doing that, let me put up um, all the different bird feeders. There we go. Um, so even if you don't have um, the stuff for this particular bird feeder, um, you can see a bunch of pictures of the different types of bird feeders that you can make. Um, we're making the pine cone one, um, but you can make one with Cheerios. A lot of people have those plain Cheerios. Um, if you put them on a string um, or uh, yarn, and tie it in a circle and hang it up. Um, that works too. Um, you can see that there's one made out of an old uh, plastic bottle. So if you cut that, make sure the edges aren't sharp or anything, uh, but you can put bird seed in there. Uh, if you don't have a pine cone, you can also use a toilet paper roll um, and then roll that in bird seed or oats. Um, and then the last one is the orange. That's the first one all the way over on the left. Um, we're gonna be doing that one too. Uh, and that's just half an orange hollowed out with some bird seed in the center. So if you don't have the stuff for these, um, there's plenty out there. There's even more than what we have up here. Um, and you can they can be made from all different kinds of household objects. So if you don't have the stuff for this, no worries. There's plenty out there. So I'm not going to do this full thing because it's going to take me a little while. Let me bring you back up. So I've got Crisco all slathered throughout the top of this. I'm going to take my Quaker Oats. And thank you. Um, I have my friends Krista and April in the comments putting in some extra um, resources for you guys. Thank you guys. Okay, so I've just put some oats out on my cutting board. Um, and I'm going to roll these into my pine cone, sprinkle them on there so that they stick. Looks like they're sticking pretty good. Put it upside down, sprinkle that excess off. I have looks a little bit like this. Um, so if we had more time, I'd go ahead and do the whole thing. But um, since we only have a little bit of time left, let's go just the top here. And I'm going to take a piece of string. Uh, that looks pretty good here. So about like this. And I'm going to tie that around. The bottom part here. I'm just going to make a simple overhand knot. Um, so if you have seen our knot tying videos, you might have practiced that one. Uh, if you don't know how to tie the knot, grab a parent. I'm sure they can help you out. Um, 
or a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle or a brother or a sister, whoever you're at home with. Um, and I tied two, so it's nice and tight. Um, and then it sits like this, and I can go ahead and hang that up outside um, and wait and see if the birds come and have a snack. Um, that's nice to have up because then I can uh, get some more birds to my yard. I can observe them. I can take notes on them. Uh, pretty cool. So that is our first one, which is pretty simple. That's it's still falling off. I'll put that to the side. Um, and then I'm going to make my second. Um, so for my second one, I'm going to need an orange. If you already have it cut, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to take a knife. Again, make sure you have a parent's help for this one. Um, and I'm not going to cut it quite in half. I want it um, deep enough so that my oats can fit in there. Um, so, maybe about here. Okay, well, it smells really good. About like this. And then you take my knife and cut the center out. Um, or a spoon could work. Um, if you're using a knife, make sure you have a parent's help. So you cut a circle all the way around. Take my spoon. Just Kind of like carving a pumpkin, but instead it's an orange. That works just in there. Okay, so I have that pretty hollowed out. Um, there's still some orange in there, uh, but that's okay because birds like fruit as well. And I'm going to I'm going to poke a hole on either side here um, so that I can put the string through. Um, so let me see what. I did bring down a hole puncher. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it's, I think it's going to be too thick for this. Yeah. So maybe I'll take um, my knife and just cut a little hole. Just so that my string can fit through. Like this. So a hole on this side, a hole on this side, and then I need a string. Let me see if we have any more comments. Any questions? There's some people asking if there'll be. This will be on YouTube after. Yes, it'll be on our YouTube channel. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to cut this string. It's about the same length, maybe a little bit longer than the last one. I'm going to put that through. Of the holes. And then through the other. Okay, that looks like this. And then I'm going to tie a knot at the top. Maybe two knots just in case. It should be able to hang kind of like this. And then 
I'm going to go ahead and put some oats in the center. Fill with oats like this. If you have bird seed, that's awesome too. And I can just hang that up outside and let the birds come. Um, because there's fruit, um, just make sure you keep an eye on this one. Um, you don't want it to go uh, bad. You don't want the fruit to get moldy or anything. Um, so keep an eye on it. Make sure it's not um, there's no mold on it. Um, once there is, you're going to want to go ahead and take it down um, so that the birds aren't eating any bad fruit or anything like that. See if we're getting any other comments. It looks like I'm freezing up a little bit. Maybe that's just my computer. Hopefully. Okay, it's a little bit like this. I'm going to put this mess off to the side. Um, but now I have two bird feeders. I have my pine cone. my orange. I'm going to hang those up outside and see how many birds come around. Ooh. Okay, so uh, now that we've done our bird feeders, Um, the next thing I want to show you um, is my bird chart. Okay, so I'm going to put this into my notebook as well. So if you want to open up your notebooks to the next page, um, and you can see the chart linked up there. Um, there's a size, color, time of day, um, and then type of bird. Um, so while you're watching the birds come and uh, take uh, some snacks, that you've made them from your bird feeders, um, you can fill out this chart. So you'll have size, color, time of day, and type of bird. Um, can anybody think of any other um, columns we could put in there other than size, color, and time of day? I'll give you guys a minute to copy down that chart. Someone said they're using a cutie orange for mini, mini feeders. I love that. Any other ideas um, for how we can identify birds other than size, color, and time of day? Uh, no, you don't need to do all the bird feeders. I just saw that question come along. Um, just one bird feeder works, um, but feel free to do as many as you like. Um, if you don't have the stuff for these two, um, we're going to link some, some resources in the comments um, where you can find uh, things that birds can eat, other things that birds can eat, and how you can make other bird feeders. Um, and one of the things that birds can eat that I wasn't aware of was cheese. Um, they can eat mild cheese. Um, some other resources that you can check out 
um, is the aviary, the National Aviary's website. Um, and if you didn't know, the National Aviary is actually in Pittsburgh, um, which is super cool, right in my backyard. Um, anyone else is, who's from the Pittsburgh area or Western Pennsylvania. Um, hopefully once this is all over, we can all go visit um, the aviary because it's right here in Western Pennsylvania. Oh, in the National Aviary, if you um, don't get a lot of birds where you live, maybe you live in the city and you don't see a lot of birds, um, the Aviary actually has a falcon cam. Um, so you can go on their website and you can see a live video feed of one of their falcons. Um, and then you can also go to the Pittsburgh Zoo's website. Um, they have a live feed of their penguins. Um, so you could take some notes on penguins um, in your nature journal, which is really cool. Because um, you won't see any penguins in our backyards here. Um, they also have a um, live feed of cheetahs. Um, I keep checking on it. I haven't come across them, um, but I'm still hoping. I check on it every once in a while. Someone said they're using a grapefruit to make a feeder. Awesome. Okay, I think we've had that up um, for a decent amount of time. Um, so the last thing I want to do um, is a little bit of true and false quizzing um, about birds, um, some facts about birds. Um, that I have here. Um, so I will ask the questions and then you guys can type into the comments whether you think they are true or false. Um, so I have them. Let me bring them up. Okay. So the first question is, birds are the only living animals that have feathers. Is that true or false? Birds are the only things that have feathers. Are the only living animals that have feathers? True or false? Somebody said false. Got a couple of falses. False. That one is actually true. Um, all birds have feathers. Some birds have highly modified feathers to fit particular functions, such as the fancy feathers on a peacock's tail. Um, but if they have feathers, they are a bird. Um, the next one is um, all birds fly. True or false? False. False. Yes, that is correct. Um, while most birds um, are known for the, er, their ability to fly, there are many that do not, um, such as penguins that we already talked about, um, who swim, uh, as well as ostriches, emus, and kiwis. Uh, I'm not sure what a kiwi is. Um, that might be something I want to look up after this, um, but definitely ostriches and emus, those real big birds with long legs. Um, they do not fly, um, neither do penguins. Sometimes I forget that penguins are in fact a bird. Um, so the next true or false question is birds have poor eyesight. True or false? Is someone saying false, false, false? Okay, I'm getting a lot of falses. So yes, um, that one is false. Birds generally have very good eyesight. Uh, many birds can see color even, um, and some see light in the ultraviolet spectrum, um, which we as humans do not. Um, so that is a neat fun fact about birds. They all have very good eyesight. Okay, the next one is all birds lay eggs. Is that true or false? Someone said hawks be very great. Yes, that is true. 
All birds lay eggs. True or false? Let's see. A couple trues, a couple falses. And that one is actually true. All bird species do lay eggs, um, but male birds do not. Female birds are the ones that lay the eggs. Um, the next one is all birds sing. Is that true or false? Some trues, some falses. And is it false? Yes, so that one is false. Um, while not all birds sing, um, the beautiful songs we commonly think of, most are capable of making a variety of sounds. They can be calls, chip notes, or pecking against a tree. Um, and the birds that do sing, um, males tend to do more singing um, than females. Um, so that one is false. Um, I don't think I've ever heard a penguin sing, although I would really like to. Um, and the last one is, uh, most birds eat worms. True or false? A little bit of both. So this one is actually false. Uh, there's a large variety of diets among birds. Birds eat anything from seeds, nectar, insects, worms, fish, crustaceans, frogs, to small animals. Um, I see somebody saying hawks. Yep, hawks eat small animals. Um, so the owls, uh, penguins eat fish. Um, so no, not all bar birds eat worms. Um, and in fact, not most of birds don't eat worms. Uh, and then I have another set of questions, um, but I'll go through these ones uh, pretty quick since we're about out of time here. Okay, so all birds migrate, true or false? I'll give you a second to think. That one is false. Not all birds migrate. For example, the rock pigeon is one species which remains in one area all year round. This bird is found throughout the U.S. Many birds, especially those that eat insects, must migrate to find food. Um, so not all birds migrate. Um, the ones that do, do so so that they can find food. Um, the next one is all birds build nests. True or false? That one is false. Some birds do not. For example, brown-headed cowbirds lay their eggs in the nests of other birds. Um, super interesting. Um, they don't build their own nests. They actually um, put their eggs in other birds' nests. <laughs> A little rude, I have to say, um, but very interesting. Um, the next one is most birds live in their nests year-round. True or false? That one is false. Um, nests are only for laying eggs and raising of young. However, some birds like owls will use nest boxes for cover during the day. Um, so that was one that I didn't know. I thought birds just always lived in nests, um, but they use them um, for laying eggs. The next one is birds can breathe inside their eggs before they hatch. True or false? These ones are a little more difficult. This one is actually true. Eggshells are porous enough for gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen to pass through. Um, so yes, they can breathe inside of their shells. Um, and the last one is eggshells are made out of the same materials as chalk. True or false? Um, 
that one is true. Uh, both are made of primarily calcium carbonate. Um, so very interesting, um, some of those true and false questions. Um, and again, you can find lots of information um, on birds um, on the websites that we're linking in the comments. Um, that includes the uh, National Aviary right here in Pittsburgh. Um, the, what was the other one? Audubon Society, they have a lot of information on birds as well. Um, so sorry, I know we're a couple minutes over on time, um, but we've done everything to earn our Nature Fun patch. Um, so thank you all for joining me um, for Nature Fun, uh, for making some bird feeders, uh, learning a little bit about leaf identification, a bunch about birds, um, and making your Nature Fun kits, which include your notebook, a pen or pencil, um, critter examination, um, a magnifying glass, all that fun stuff. Um, so thank you again. Um, I really appreciate you all uh, taking the time to join me, um, and I hope you're all out there staying safe and staying healthy. Um, have a good night. Bye, everyone.